imagine you want to create a web page. But of course, you will need to find the simplest way to store configuration. Instead of creating a monster, difficult to maintain. Do you think it's possible? Today, we are going to talk about, to share our experience about using the best practices to specify the configuration with using the context-aware configurations approach. My name is Alena Portelli. I'm the requirements engineer working on communities project for UBS. And I'm Luis Navarro. I'm backend software engineer, also working in UBS communities project. And today we are talking about what is context awareness, context awareness in AEM, old approach of configuration management, context aware configuration approach in AEM, and we'll go a bit deeper in some technical details on how configuration looks like and the benefits and the lacks of the context aware configuration. Okay, context aware configuration. Why is it talk? Um, you know, for us it's very important to find a way to make our AM based solutions more flexible in order to give more power to our clients uh, to adapt the AM based sites to their needs in any moment they want. Also, we are trying to constantly enhance the user experience of our clients and make their life easier. In our project, we are focused on delivering the high quality products. And we are trying to simplify our development process um, to leave more time for innovation. And as you know, the time is money. Context of our configuration uh, can help us to reach those goals in IAM projects. What is the context awareness? Uh, the term context awareness was first introduced in the 90s by Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. Initial meaning of this was the ability of the system to adapt to the contextual information such as time, location, language and different user behavior. But what does it mean in IAM? You know, we have delivered already several IAM uh, sites and we have uh, every day there are a lot of users connected to them. And they are in the, um, speak different languages, they have different pre pre uh, preferences and they are in different locations. And how we can suit their needs. Context aware configurations in IAM allow to manage the site configurations in a hierarchical way. It was introduced in IAM 6.2 in 2016 with the open source extension WCM IO CR config. We have applied this uh, approach in communities project and all of us we saw that it's a nice alternative to the ways of managing configurations we were using before. Um, how it was before? Before IAM 6.2, there was no way to store um, configurations in the hierarchical way. Every IAM project need to invent something in order to maintain the configuration. For example, we have the page properties, the configuration template, the key values. Here you can see the examples of page properties, configuration templates, and the key values. And you know, this is just a screenshot that I can put here in presentation, but if I would put a all list, it we will need to have a screen from the sale to the floor. And imagine what the customer will feel, feel when he sees this. So, the disadvantage of the past approach was the different points of access. We had the configuration templates with a lot of not related information page properties which need to be set up for every page and the key values with so many lines. It was difficult to, to configure, hard to maintain and it was not user friendly. And there was no automatic way of managing configurations in a hierarchical way. Each time we need to go back to the code in order to find the parent configuration. So it was not a standard way 
and it couldn't be reused because all the dialogues and the mechanism were customized for each project. So let's look how the context aware configurations enhance this process. Uh, first of all, they're based on touch right. Uh, there were already existing sets of dialogues and mechanisms. So like this, we didn't have a need to do everything from scratch. The configuration page template, they can be created on different levels. And if you want to change the settings, it can be easily overwritten on each level of site hierarchy. And of course, it was more user-friendly. This is an example of what we have implemented in communities. Like you see, it's well-structured. We have the configuration for footer, header, the, uh, the registration, and, the, and other things. And now I will give the word to Luis, who will explain you this more in technical details. Okay. Okay, I, as I explained you, I will go a little bit deeper in some technical details of the implementation, well not the implementation, but how is the resolution process and how is the storage of the configuration of, for the context of our configuration. First of all, as you may know, all the single page uh, stored in AEM are below the content tree. And the same happens with the configuration template that we are managing for the context aware configuration. You have to create a new page as a configuration page using the context aware configuration template and create it below the content path, the content tree. Then you add each single configuration that you want and set up the values that you are defining for the project that you are working. But each configuration actually is stored in the same level, but in the configuration tree. So this one allows us to maintain all the configurations stored in just one place, instead of having them in the JCR content nodes in the content tree. And it's, mapping, it's mapped directly with the level in which you are defining that particular page. But what happened if you have a configuration that was set up in an upper level, and you want to read it in one of his children. Well, basically, the resolution process automatically go upper to the parent level, and if it doesn't find any configuration stored there, go upper again until level one. And if, this, if the configuration is not set up there, it will go to configuration global, then to apps configuration, and then to lips configuration. So that will allow us to maintain an inheritance within all the sites. And even if the configuration is not stored in any, any of those nodes, you are able to define in the Java code a default value that you will use as part of this configuration. So for instance, if you have to set up a header, just defining the default value in the Java class will use that particular value until you redefine it. So knowing how is the storage process and how is the resolution process of the context aware configuration, we'll talk about benefits of the context aware configuration itself. First of all, it's really easy to configure. Why is that? First of all, the persistent strategy. You may think, if I am storing a configuration page in the content tree and I'm storing the configuration uh, itself in the configuration tree, how is the triggering of that configuration when I activate the page? Well, with the AM page strategy, each configuration is saved as a page in the, in the configuration tree. And once you activate a, the configuration page, all the configurations that are stored in the same level are triggered to the publish instance. So it's accessible in the publish instance. If you don't use the AM page, it is not triggered automatically, so you have to do it directly in the CRX. Also, there is another approach that we are not using right now, but it's the tools configuration page. 
This one, what it does is to create a tools folder and a configuration page below the level in, in the same content tree. And it doesn't use the configuration tree. So every single configuration is stored below it, but we believed that using the other strategy is more organized because you don't have to find in going deeper in a particular level, but you're going to the same level in the configuration tree. Also, it's really flexible in which particular path or template you want to define configurations. For instance, you have the context path strategy with absolute parents that what allows you is to define I want configuration in content sites and then in level four or level five. I mean, you can play with whatever level you want and even you can blacklist some path it, that probably you don't want to define configurations in anything that is called it, that finish with a tools or with config. So you blacklist all the path that finish with it. And also, you have the flexibility to define root templates. For instance, if you have a home page template and you want to define all the configurations in that particular template, you are able to set it up and not using a particular path, but using the template itself. And in every place of the platform that that template appears, you are able to set it up a configuration template there and access the configuration that you are defining everywhere else. Also, it's really simple to maintain, okay? We have just four kind of parameters. Text, that is a string. Integer values, double values with decimals, and Boolean values. Also, we are able to set up a string value with a path. So you are able to set up, to pick a page or a, an image or a video within a particular entry point that you are defining for that path. So for instance, if you want to pick the logo of the page, you can save it in the DAM and start in content DAM. So the user is able to pick the logo of the page, just putting the path here. Also, you can have a list of elements or customized elements in which, for instance, you can define several values in the same object. In this particular case, we are using for the footer, for each footer link, we are using a label and a link. So we have two string values. One is for the label, and the other one is a pass that points to another page within the, the AEM platform. My favorite uh, benefit is that handles automatically global and specific inheritance. If you define a configuration in one point of the platform, and you don't want to redefine it, it will find in all the children of that configuration the value that you define in the parent. But if you want to define a configuration, what you have to do is to create another configuration template in the place you want, add the configuration itself, and redefine the values you want to redefine. And even if you want just to redefine one or two or three of the values of the configuration, you are able to enable the property inheritance, and in each of the fields that you want to inherit, you tick it and redefine the other one that you don't want to, to inherit. And going deeper into, specific, into details of uh, implementation, it's really easy to access it. From Java, it needs just three lines of code. One is to adapt the resource that you are receiving as a configuration builder, then adapt the configuration builder to the specific configuration that you are defining, and then get the data. And for HTL, it's easier. You just have to do it exactly this way, changing a specific configuration for the Java class and the function that you are calling. And the last one, to finish the presentation, which are the lags of the context aware configuration, at least the ones that we are presenting, that we are facing in UBS communities. The first one is we don't have a lot of configurable fields. So for instance, we don't have rich text editors. 
we have a disclaimer that probably will need to have bold words, italics, or links, or bullets, but it is not way to implement it doing the context of our configuration. So what we are doing is to, ready, is to define an external component in a page and then point to that particular component from the path, from a path that is possible to, to configure it. Also, we don't have any kind of data validation. So if you need a maximum uh, length for a string or word counting or number maximum and minimum, probably you will need also to point to an external component to define this kind of restrictions. It's not possible to do it directly in the configuration template itself. For instance, we are facing an issue that we are defining custom fields. And as you may know, a form in HTML cannot have more than one word because it is an ID that it has to res respect to save the data in the platform. So we have no way to define that the user use just one word for that particular field. So we have to specify it in user guides. And well, it's, it can be done also in an external component, but we are not implementing it that way. And we have some missing elements that we would like to have, such as a predefined list of elements or radio buttons. Because imagine that you have to pick from a set of icons and you don't have a list of elements. So it can be difficult for the user to pick uh, an icon on, or another list of, from another list of elements. So it has to enter the values that the user wants, actually. And we don't have any data integration. So for instance, if we want to pick a user from the platform, we cannot do it. So we have to point directly to a path in the, in where the users are stored and probably the user doesn't have access. So there is no internal data integration for, for doing these kind of things. So we already defined what is the context of our configuration. We give you the benefits and the lags. And as you may know, it's not just something that we can imagine. We can organize it. We can have a good approach to store the configuration. And we are doing right now in UBS communities. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, they are more than welcome. <laughs>